everybody. Let's see what I look like. Uh, hi y'all. Joy here at Stephen Suburban Homestead. Welcome for joining. Um, welcome all you replay viewers. So um, do a, just a quick video. I've been sick for a couple weeks so our gardens, I'll go ahead and flip to that. Hey Cherie Bliss. Our gardens got a little overgrown so I'll just show you a few things. We practice permaculture and we're in zone 9B, which is um, basically Houston, Texas. I don't know what other region that is. Minnesota! Y'all are still a little bit cold up there, I hear. Um, so for you guys that are north of me, this can be just like a preview of what's going to happen for y'all in the next like 30 to 45 days. So um, chili, chili! We already have a lot of things in the ground and a lot of the things that are not supposed to be perennials actually were. So I planted some Irish potatoes early and onions, and you can see they're um, more than halfway done. In fact, some of my onions done at the end are already done. <clears throat> but what happened was, because it got so warm already for us, I'm not trying to rub it in, just happens. And for you guys, maybe starting in May, up in some of the northern regions, I, my mama said the first week of May, she's in Oklahoma, we're going to plant her garden. So Minnesota may even be like late May. Anyhow, y'all can start your seeds now. Um... But if you are in a region where your spring has sprung, you'll see I have a bunch of straw all around. And part of the permaculture thing for us is to use what we have available. So over here we have pine straw that we got from neighbors. And then we got this um, regular straw that was left over from the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. We get it every year for free. We go the last day. So we put that in the gardens. It's super messy because I ran out of energy. I only have energy to talk to y'all. <laughs> Anyway, I just weeded these five buds, and you can see that, like, I don't have enough planted. Um, either they didn't sprout yet, there's, like, a teeny weeny one there, or maybe I lost some things. Who the heck knows? That's a permaculture, and then you can see I'm being attacked by some kind of caterpillars here. Um, I put some neem oil on it, and what I do for these gardens, now that I have them fenced in, is as things mature, <clears throat> I will just plant new stuff, because, like, okra is coming up, um... For us pumpkins watermelons i even have a couple of volunteers over here i'm pretty sure this one is a watermelon and this is some kind of squash but i don't know yet and i have some beets i just have lots of things growing and so what i did was i'm weeding everything out and i'm just kind of assessing what really took i had a lot of ants in this garden bed so i had a lot of trouble i've planted like three different times so i did get some beets growing and some greens and herbs and you can't see them because they're small, but I have um, I have some broccoli volunteer, watermelon, like I just said, and I have some onions. So um, I pulled out an, uh, things that are dead you need to pull out now and things that are volunteers that you don't want to grow. Like these are gorgeous tomatoes. They're yellow pear tomatoes, but they get like 12 feet tall. So I'm going to transplant these over to like the corner here and let them grow out and then I'll let them grow along the fence line here. Um, I don't want them taking up my bed space and that's a radish I'm seeding. So that's what we're doing today. We're just kind of weeding and then putting down more straw. And when I get energy this afternoon, I'll come back out and I'll pull some more of the things out that I don't really want there. And then I'll plant some new things. I wonder if my cut my thing cut out, Cherie. Sorry if that happened. Anyway, we also have berries and stuff. And so my, my goal this week is just to get things um, weeded. And then really good layer of mulch. This is something, again, if you're north, uh, north of us, you would do more like in May. Right now, I'm guessing if you're north, you're probably going to be preparing your beds. Even if it's cold or there's um, <clears throat> maybe even a little snow. Okay, good. If there's a little snow or something, then um, you might obviously not be digging in the snow. But you can get your seeds prepared, um, started. You can get your garden layout done. Now if you're a permaculture garden like over here, there it looks kind of random, but it really there is a plan because I do some crop rotation and um I think I probably could do it a little better so I could have like dead stuff in here and then have my chickies go in there, but it just hasn't worked out that way. Um over here I am doing a little bit more preparing. These are um broccoli. So permaculture is the idea that you basically I think it started in Australia. And you just try to imagine a forest. There's layers of it. You've got tall trees. You've got medium-sized bushes. You've got the undergrowth. You've got the dead leaves down there that are creating natural compost. And so even in your garden, it may sound crazy, but look, I've got a fig tree. 
And then I've got pollinator things here. I've got my milkweed and these are some nectar uh, flowers. I've got berries and then around the berries I've got um, garlic and stuff. It sounds kind of weird to plant together. The idea though is to just use what you have. Like I was talking about the pine straw earlier and the straw that we get for free. It could be dead mulch leaves from your yard. I mean, take a look at our tree coverage here. We got lots of leaves in the fall. So take what you have and use it like you would if it was a natural forest. Um, we are just a family of three and then we have grandpa and we have lots of friends obviously um, and chickens. But so we don't need to grow like 30 rows of corn. We just have a three sisters garden in the front. I think I did a video on that. I'll, I'll do another one later on it. And so they like permaculture has a lot of companion planting. So three sisters is an American Indian thing where you plant corn pole beans because the pole beans grow up on the corn stalks and then you put your squashes watermelons pumpkins any kind of melon family around which will cover the floor it's it's more than companion planting though in the sense that permaculture is you're always planting so you can see like i have new broccoli starting i have very unhappy potatoes so maybe don't take advice on that i've got onions planting and then i've got nothing but um, I have okra seeds ready and I have um, like black beans ready. So as soon as I get the dirt over the next few days, I'll start planting that. And then like I was saying over here, some of these beds look like there's some open spaces. Well, I'm not gonna just waste that. I'm gonna go ahead and just start planting something new. So I might plant some pepper plants. Um, I'm not gonna plant any tomatoes in there. Let me show you all over here. <clears throat> so we have this huge fence line. Um, I have lots of videos on our YouTube channel, Stephen Suburban Homestead, that talks more specifically about how I did this. But let, this is a great idea of um, permaculture. We just had this bed that someone else had put here, and it had tons of overgrown things, had tons of extra crepe myrtle trees. We actually have them planted um, over here now to kind of add aesthetic beauty to our strange court that's here we didn't add this but see permaculture like we have fencing so we just plant things that have need um climbing and then like i have um last season's brock or excuse me brussels sprouts and then i have the tomatoes right behind them i have onions right in between them i have um pollinator plants i have i'm trying to think of the word um marigolds i have some society garlic those are things that help get rid of bugs one other key feature of permaculture besides trying to do things more naturally and continuing to plant with the season rather than just, you know, one time is chickens. Chickens! We have five sweet little hens and their run, which is extremely large for five hens, but that's just how we roll. Um, and we have one little, uh, I guess I can go in here. Why am I trying to like show you all far away? Duh. Um, we put our compost bins in here and they rummage through them and eat. And then this is all nice and straw. So the, yeah, there's poop in here, but it doesn't sink actually. I know that sounds crazy. Here's two of our girls and we have two in the laying boxes. Hey girls, that's Hart and that's Dr. Susie. It's hard to see. We have a little tortoise. Am I bothering you? So sorry. Um, and then I guess there's Sweet Feather taking a dust bath in there. The chickens um, roam the property sometimes when we're out gardening, and so they'll eat the bugs for us, and then they obviously fertilize, and we take their poo, which is a little gross, but it is what it is. Everybody poos. We have poo bins in here, and we scrape that up and put them in there, and about every six weeks, sounds weird, every six weeks we dump them into here. Yeah, they are awesome. They give you the eggs. They give you love. They're actually quite fun. Um, there's a Facebook page called Drinking with Chickens. It's freaking hilarious. This lady, I don't know how she has time to be so damn cute. And um, she puts a picture up almost every day of different drinks they're drinking with their chickens. We just drink like tea and lemonade with them because um, I'm a late night drinker actually after my child goes to bed. <laughs> but um, anyway, we do just kind of hang out because they're funny. And when we take our breaks, we just sit down and chill with them but they work really hard they eat a lot of bugs they poop a lot um and so we make really delicious compost for our gardens and we when this straw i don't know when this straw will be gross but we just kind of um 
we rake it around so it's a little neater, like about once every week or so. And the poo just kind of goes into the dirt and stuff, but eventually it'll probably get wet or whatever. And we'll put it into the compost bin and we'll just put new straw down. Um, so they have nice fresh bedding. I think it might be like once every six months though. But that in itself is also part of permaculture. Um, and on our particular property, we have our veg. We have, we're a certified um, way station for monarchs. And we have an orchard back here. So we have fruit. We're trying to grow all of our own things. We even have like some cool new, they're kind of hard to see here, but elderberry bushes I'm going to make wine with. And we just kind of do our thing. So we have a lot of videos on Periscope and on YouTube under Stephen Suburban Homestead. Things about chicken keeping, mistakes we've made, how tired I get sometimes when I don't have a lot of help. <laughs> Um, you know, things that, that I've learned that I could do better, like if I had this whole bed space kind of um, done for the season, then I could put the chicks in here, the hens in here for like two or three weeks and make it like a secondary run. And then they would like get rid of all these things. I know. Thank you. Like if I wouldn't have any of these bug issues, but because we fenced it and because I didn't plan it quite right. So we'll just see. I was going to plant some things in here, and now that I'm talking to you, I may just let these go and plant my okra and my peas and beans and any of my additional peppers over there. And that's just another idea of permaculture is, like, you can constantly be moving things around. Um, when you get chickens, you're going to need some kind of cover. We went the less expensive route with netting, and this netting actually will go all the way across here. So it can be a secondary run. Or if you raise turkeys or ducks, or if you have like ch um, chicks and then you have mature hens, you're going to need them in two different places. So that's another interesting thing about chicken keeping. I've done lots of videos. You're welcome to go back and look. So anyway, I am going to go and look at a camper. We love to camp. So I need to go inside and take a shower and go look at this used camper. Um... We, my husband works full time now and I do not work full time anymore and so that's how I have time to do this. Um, it's a life choice. We actually are almost 100% debt free. We have no mortgage, no car payments and this will be the one thing that we'll owe on credit but we're buying a used camper. It's in great shape so we um, cherish our time with nature and our child and not like any other parent doesn't but we've made some very difficult life choices so that we can really slow ourselves down and we live in the city just right outside of Houston in Kingwood um, that's why we're called a suburban homestead it can be done you could be free of debt you could be free of a job um, and hopefully my husband will get to retire early so we'll be working on other ways to stay self-sufficient um, we're not necessarily preppers, we're more like just kind of hippies hanging out, wanting to be free of the rat race, which we were part of for 20 years. And now we're trying to, even though we're only in our 40s, we're trying to enjoy our time while we're young and healthy. And um, I hope that that's inspiring to you. And uh, anyway, I will see you soon. Peace out. Follow us, please. And check us out on YouTube. Um, we have a Facebook page. You can send us questions. Thank you. All right, you too. Peace out.